Yo, this is a review for the North Face Men's Freedom Bib. What I've got on camera today is the shady blue colorway in a size medium. You can find this on Amazon, the North Face, REI, and I'm sure other retailers for right around $200. I'll drop the link in the description. This is a made in Bangladesh snow bib with a 100% nylon shell, 100% polyester main lining, and 100% nylon lower lining. It has a zipper entry closure on the center of the front side that runs from chest to crotch that can also be secured with two snaps. The North Face claims the bib is waterproof due to its DWR coating and also windproof yet breathable. The shoulder straps are adjustable and elastic, making sizing more flexible and the fit more comfortable across changing body positions. There are five pockets, one Velcro chest pocket, two zippered waist front pockets, and two Velcro mid thigh pockets. There are two zippered vents on the inner thighs. There are five belt loops at waist level and a backside elastic waistband with a Velcro strap on each side for locking in your preferred tension. The waistband is separate from the belt loops. Inside the pant legs is a second lining with an elastic band for stretching around your ski boots. Okay, so should you buy? This type of product serves only two functions, to keep you dry and warm. The bib is definitely hydrophobic due to the DWR coating, but the question is how long will that last? Sadly, that's really out of your control and just depends on how much abuse your bib takes from the environment in terms of oils, abrasions, and other foreign influences. I don't think it's a big deal to re-up your DWR though, it's much cheaper than buying a new bib and it's relatively quick. The main way this bib will keep you dry, as opposed to regular snow pants, is the full body coverage up to the shoulder straps. Now when you burn out, eject, or rumble and tumble, you don't have a gap at your waist asking for a snow wedgie. I know everyone has experienced this. You slide out and fall on your ass, only to have snow blasted up the backside of your shirt or jacket. Then it falls back into your pants and underwear for a soggy mess. That situation is totally avoided here. You're basically wearing a jumpsuit and you really have to do something terribly wrong for snow to get in over the top of your chest. The elastic boot liners on your lower legs do as good a job as any pants by preventing snow blasting up your ankles. Let's talk temperature. First of all, there's a fine line between warm and sweaty. This bib is definitely breathable, again, due to the DWR coating. As far as insulating materials, however, there isn't much at play here. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the bib is just a nylon shell with a polyester interior lining. It's hard to quantify any kind of warmth capability, like you could with a certain fill density of down, for example. The bib is definitely thin, but it leaves room to wear layers underneath. My recommendation is to try this on at your local REI so you understand, but know that you will more than likely want to wear something under the bib. Something like thermal underwear, leggings, or even sweatpants are good choices here. Of course, some kind of shirt is necessary too because the bib does not cover your shoulders. Ultimately, I find that no matter what I wear, I always wind up getting too hot when I'm really working up and down the mountain. So personally, I prefer something thinner. Also, the thigh vents make this bib adaptable to your situation. Just remember, this might not be the best choice if you're chronically cold or like to ski in the most violent of blizzards. So, other than the two main factors, dryness and warmth, this bib has a lot of utility features that add value to your purchase. Like I mentioned, there are a total of five pockets across the bib. The front waist pockets have zippers and a soft, warm interior. These are excellent pockets in terms of both comfort and security. The thigh cargo pockets are roomy and easy to access, and the chest velcro pocket is conveniently located for quickly securing a trinket on your way up the mountain. However, my only gripe with these velcro pockets is I wish they were more uniformly sealed. They opted to use two separate velcro unions, which means there is a small gap of a few millimeters right in the middle of the pocket. There are also small gaps on the edges, but that's a symptom of not using enough velcro, regardless of how many pieces it's in. Either way, this is a huge psychological block for me because it limits what I'm comfortable putting in my pockets. Cargo pockets are nice because they're big and have a big opening, but if you're worried the closure isn't a perfect seal, you'll never put anything too small inside, especially when you know you're going to tumble down the mountain. Could something like a pair of earbuds get out? Eh, probably not, but a house key? Honestly, maybe. The other thing with Velcro is you have to make sure you actually close it correctly by applying enough force. And once it's covered in snow and dirt, is it still going to hold the seal? Then there's the chest pocket in particular, which is angled horizontally but still has the same small gaps in the Velcro as the thigh pockets. This feels really strange to me. 
I really think the chest pocket should have a zipper. And for $200, it seems a bit cheap to use small pieces of Velcro. Maybe I'm going too hard nitpicking the Velcro pockets, but I felt like I needed to share because using them kind of stresses me out. Either way, let me reiterate the zippered waist pockets are fantastic. When it comes to the loops and straps around the waist section, it's kind of a mixed bag of value. At first glance, belt loops seem like a nice idea, but obviously you don't ever need to wear a belt because you're in a full body bib supported by shoulder straps. You could of course hang any number of things with a carabiner, like a flask, your gloves, maybe even ski poles somehow. Let your mind run wild. Then there are the elastic waist straps. Again, you don't actually need a tighter waist fit for any functional reason, i.e. holding up your pants. You could tighten the band for comfort or style reasons if that suits you. However, I found an overly tightened waist to actually come at a cost. Basically, it's going to affect the overall shape and flex of the bib as you enter a deep squat. The more tension you put around your waist will change how the bib rides up around your crotch and lower back. I found it's better to leave everything hanging loose as much as possible to maximize comfort and range of motion. So in summary, there are a bunch of utility features around the waistband, but these might be more style points than anything. One last thing I wanted to mention is the front zipper you use to enter and exit the bib does zip all the way down to the crotch such that you can pee without taking off the bib. You should be able to leave the shoulder straps on while you go. Number two on the other hand is more complicated. You'll have to drop trowel all the way to your ankles. Get ready to be cold. Due to the nature of one piece garments, I think these bibs definitely cater to the one size fits a wide range approach. I tried on both a medium and large at my local REI. The large was much too baggy and the medium was perfect. Based on the significant size difference between medium and large, I didn't even attempt the small as I knew it would be far too tight. I didn't have a sizing chart available at the time, so it was just trial and error for me. Let me share my measurements as a reference. I'm six foot tall, weighing 155 pounds. I have a 41 inch chest and a 36 inch belly. I feel like inseam is kind of a subjective measurement. Just give as much room around the crotch as you want, but I'll say mine is 28 inches. That said, I think it would be risky to order this online without trying it on. I really recommend you go to the store, but I know some people will continue to live dangerously. I think that's just about all there is to say about this product. I'm satisfied with my purchase and I would recommend. I dropped the Amazon link below if you're interested. Please let me know if I can improve these videos in any way. Like and comment below with any questions, I'm more than happy to help and I'm sure I missed something. If you'd like to support the channel, you should of course subscribe, but if you'd like to go above and beyond, you can buy me a coffee using the link in the description. I appreciate every one of you. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.